This is part one of the Craftsman King Sealy three wheel bandsaw rebuild series. In addition to rebuilding the bandsaw, we will be rebuilding the pedestal base mount fort. We'll be rebuilding and rewiring for grounded wiring a Craftsman power panel switch system. We will be rebuilding a very interesting, very old GE induction motor. And if that wasn't enough, we're going to be throwing in a very rare, very hard to find Craftsman slow speed converter just to spice it all up. But before we get to any of that stuff, I've got to talk about this bandsaw and why I'm even rebuilding it. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to talk about, so let's get to it. So this is a Craftsman 12 inch three wheel bandsaw. They were made by the King Sealy Corporation and they were produced between 1950 through 1965. This one is model number 103-24300. And according to my research, it was made between 1950 and 19. 56. I'm thinking this is probably on the low end of 1950. So the idea behind a three wheel bandsaw as opposed to two wheel bandsaws is that you can make a more compact design. And so this is still a 12 inch bandsaw. That's the throat, the distance between the blade and the frame of the bandsaw which means that you could cut to the very center of a 24 inch circle. But the compactness design of this made this saw more appealing for somebody that had limited space in their shop. They could mount it on top of a bench and use it there. And it didn't take up near as much room and didn't require as much height as a two wheel bandsaw while still being just as capable as that two wheel. And speaking of two wheel bandsaws, this is my 1963 Craftsman King Sealy 12 inch two wheel bandsaw. And I rebuilt this back in 2020, added the light and it's got a power pack switch system on it. And it's got a worm gear on it because I use this for cutting metal. So that worm gear allows me to slow the saw down to around 80 RPM. And at the time I was looking really hard for the Craftsman slow speed converter, but I couldn't find one. More about that in a few minutes. In any case, if you're watching this video, then you're aware of my affinity for those Craftsman King Sealy and Emerson drill presses, uh, the 100s and the 150s. They're just so iconic looking. They've got that Art Deco swept back look to them. And that really appeals to me. And back when I was really starting to learn about rebuilding those drill presses, I came across this very interesting image. And that's what put all this in motion. Now it doesn't look like a whole lot in this picture, but when you look at this next picture, you can see that the engineers at King Sealy Corporation weren't just making these amazing tools for craftsmen. They were making these very iconic pedestal mounts for these tools. And they look like they'd be unstable, but they're very stable. And just like that Craftsman 100 or that 150 drill press, these tools with these pedestal mounts really captured the aesthetic of the 50s and the 60s for power tools. 
in a way that no other company was doing it. And I just knew at that point that I needed to start collecting these things and rebuilding them. And that's how we ended up getting this three wheel bandsaw. The first 12 inch bandsaws or bandsaws in general to carry the Craftsman name were produced in 1933. And between 1933 and 1937, there was this mismatch of Craftsman, Craftsman Companion, Companion, Master Craftsman, until it was settled on just the Craftsman name for a series of tools. In 1938, King Sealy produced their first bandsaw that was sold under the Craftsman name, and that was a 10-inch bandsaw that they offered in a deluxe and a standard model. And uh, in 1940, we get their first 12 inch version of the bandsaw, which becomes kind of the mainstream size of bandsaw. And that one was offered with the motor and without a motor. And this model would be produced from 1940 through 1949 with the exception of three years during the war that they did not sell any bandsaws. So in 1950, we get the introduction of the three wheel bandsaw. And in 51, we get the introduction of the new two wheel bandsaw. So the two wheel design that was produced by King Silly sold from the fifties all the way through until around 1969. And Emerson picked up the production of that in 64. But that design had some slight cosmetic changes throughout the years. And that's the images that you're seeing here. The three wheel design pretty much stayed the same during this entire period. Now there was a three wheel design made by Dunlap that sold before the King Sealy three wheel design, but it was a smaller nine inch bandsaw. So that's kind of a quick rundown of the history of the Craftsman King Sealy bandsaw and what was produced and when. So like I said, with this rebuild in this series of videos, we're also going to be rebuilding a power panel and uh, we will be utilizing the slow speed converter. So what we're looking at here is one of those power panels and they were designed back when you know the wiring was just two wires there was no grounded plugs uh, for your standard 110 voltage wiring so what I do is I take these I open them up I replace all the internals and I rewire it so that it's all grounded uh, it's much safer and from the outside, it'll have a very factory look to it. And from the front, it'll look just like it does now, except new. So that's one of the things we're going to be rebuilding. And this is the ever elusive Holy Grail slow speed converter. So these were made by a company called Savage Saw, and they sold them as Savage Saw slow speed converters. And then they marketed them for Craftsman as well. So this one, as you can see, is badged for Craftsman. But the Savage Saw one looks identical. It functions identical in every way. And basically, we'll take this thing apart and let you see the insides of it when we get to it in the video series and how it works. But this converts 1 to 10. So if you've got a motor that's running at 1725 RPM the output RPM is going to be 172.5 RPM. And that can be further reduced by using different size pulleys on the bandsaw itself. And lastly, here's a quick look at that very old induction motor. So this is technology that existed as far back for GE, at least as the, uh, 1800s 
and they make versions of this motor in the 20s that was DC as well as AC. And this one is AC. It's a 1725 RPM, one quarter horsepower motor. And the three wheel bandsaw was marketed to be packaged with or you purchase separately a one third horsepower, a one quarter horsepower or a one half horsepower motor, depending on what you were going to be doing with it. Uh, so this motor is adequate for what we're going to be using the bandsaw for. And it's just a very unique motor. There's not a whole lot of moving parts. It's very simple. And once we open it up, you'll kind of get an idea of just how different this is from the other motors that we've rebuilt on various drill presses. So that should basically cover what's going to be going on with this series. And it's probably going to be eight to 10 videos. I'm not entirely sure how many, um, but I've already started the teardown video and I'll be putting that out in a week or so, but I wanted to get this video out so that uh, you could get an idea of what was going to be in this rebuild. It's not just the bandsaw. It's all of these other things along with it. So it should be an interesting series for me to do and hopefully interesting for you to view. Um, as always, I appreciate the support. So if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe and there will be more to come soon.